On February 22, 1732, George Washington is born in Westmoreland County, Virginia, the first of six children of Augustine and Mary Ball Washington. The George Washington Birthplace National Monument is a national monument in Westmoreland County, Virginia, United States. This site was developed in the mid-17th century as a colonial tobacco plantation by Englishman John Washington. George Washington, 1732-99, was Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War, 1775-83, and served two terms as the first U.S. President, from 1789 to 1797. George Washington was born in 1732 to Augustine and Mary Ball Washington of Virginia. Augustine Washington was a wealthy planter, a member of the Virginia elite. He had two children by his first wife, who died in 1729. He married Mary Ball in 1731 and would have six children with her. George was the first. Like many people in colonial times, George Washington grew up with tragedies in his life. After the family moved to Ferry Farm near Fredericksburg, Augustine Washington died. George's older half-brother, Lawrence, inherited most of the family wealth and responsibilities. As Lawrence managed the other Washington properties, 11-year-old George was left to pick up the slack at Ferry Farm. Later biographers claimed that this gave him a strong work ethic and sense of responsibility. So, what do we know about George Washington's childhood? We know that wealthy colonists educated their children in arithmetic, Latin, Greek, bookkeeping, and surveying, then sent the children to England to finish school. That's what Augustine did with Lawrence and Augustine Jr. However, he died before George was old enough to complete his education, and the young man never studied abroad. George attended local schools and did well, but stopped his formal education around the age of 15. Instead, George's development was largely in the hands of his mother and his half-brother, Lawrence. Lawrence, in particular, taught George how to behave like a proper Virginian gentleman, instructing him on surveying and trigonometry, as well as literature, music, theater, and even philosophy and ethics. Among the philosophies introduced into George's life were those of the Enlightenment, a philosophical movement that stressed universal truth and logic, and advanced such radical ideas as the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and property. John Washington, George's great-grandfather, reached the New World in 1657, settling in Virginia. Little definitive information exists on George's ancestors before his father, but what is known is that by the time George was born to Augustine and Mary Washington on February 22, 1732, the family was part of the lower echelon of Virginia's ruling class. He was the eldest child of Augustine's second marriage, there were two sons from the first. Farming and land speculation had brought the family moderate prosperity. However, when George was 11 years old, his family was dealt a terrible setback. Augustine became mortally ill after surveying his lands during a long ride in bad weather, ironically, the same circumstances killed George almost seven decades later. His father was Augustine Washington, who was a prosperous farmer and owned several plantations in the colony of Virginia. As George grew up, he was allowed to play in the corner of the garden, where he planted and grew his own little garden. After Washington's father died when he was 11, it's likely he helped his mother manage the plantation. 11 Little Known Facts About George Washington Washington had only a grade school education. At age 22, Washington led a disastrous military skirmish that sparked a world war. Washington's first love was the wife of one of his best friends. About those teeth, no, they weren't wooden. Washington wasn't always a great general, but he was an excellent spymaster. He studied geography, possibly had a little Latin, and certainly read some of the Spectator and other English classics. The copybook in which he transcribed at 14 a set of moral precepts, or rules of civility and decent behavior in company and conversation, was carefully preserved. His best training, however, was given him by practical men and outdoor occupations, not by books. He mastered tobacco growing and stock raising, and early in his teens he was sufficiently familiar with surveying to plot the fields about him. For diversion Washington was fond of riding, fox hunting, and dancing, of such theatrical performances as he could reach, and of duck hunting and sturgeon fishing. He liked billiards and cards and not only subscribed to racing associations but also ran his own horses in races. In all outdoor pursuits, from wrestling to colt breaking, he excelled. A friend of the 1750s describes him as straight as an Indian, measuring 6 feet 2 inches in his stockings, as very muscular and broad-shouldered but though large-boned, weighing only 175 pounds, and as having long arms and legs. His penetrating blue-gray eyes were overhung by heavy brows, his nose was large and straight, and his mouth was large and firmly closed. His movements and gestures are graceful, his walk majestic, and he is a splendid horseman. 
he soon became prominent in community affairs, was an active member and later vestryman of the Episcopal Church, and as early as 1755 expressed a desire to stand for the Virginia House of Burgesses. George Washington was a Virginia plantation owner who served as a general and commander-in-chief of the colonial armies during the American Revolutionary War, and later became the first president of the United States, serving from 1789 to 1797. The presidency of George Washington began on April 30, 1789, when Washington was inaugurated as the first president of the United States, and ended on March 4, 1797. Washington took office after the 1788-89 presidential election, the nation's first quadrennial presidential election, in which he was elected unanimously. Washington was re-elected unanimously in the 1792 presidential election, and chose to retire after two terms. He was succeeded by his vice president, John Adams of the Federalist Party. Washington was unanimously re-elected president, receiving 132 electoral votes, one from each elector, and Adams was re-elected vice president, receiving 77 votes. The other 55 electoral votes were divided among, George Clinton, 50, Thomas Jefferson, 4, and after serving eight years as president of the United States, Washington grew tired of political battles. He declined to run for a third term. He chose to retire to his beloved Mount Vernon. Historically Washington is a much-loved figure. Eulogizing Washington after his death on December 14, 1799, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia praised him as first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. George Washington's portrait can be found on both the American Quarter and the One Dollar Bill. His legendary false teeth have been on display in our nation's capital. The capital of the United States is named after him. We still celebrate his birthday, a tradition that was started as a tribute to him soon after his death. Since Abraham Lincoln's birthday was in the same month, the two birthdays are now celebrated together on the third Monday of February, which is called President's.